Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast today. It is my personal delight to be with you today. And right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Leviticus, chapter 16. This is a good day for you, if at all possible, to get your Bible out and join me in Leviticus, chapter 16, the day of atonement. If this happens to be your very first time to be listening to the broadcast today, I say a very special welcome to you. We walk through books of the Bible. As we're going through the book of Leviticus, typically we take a chapter at a time. I'll say here in a moment that we're not going to do that with chapter 16, and I'll explain why here. But if you can, get your Bible open to Leviticus chapter 16. Also, get something on which you can jot some notes, please. Now, if I were to ask you why a person should receive Jesus as their Savior and be saved from their sin, what would be your answer? How would you answer the why question? question. Now, stop. Please stop here and really answer in your own thinking, in your own mind, answer the question. Whether it be you, me, somebody in China, somebody in Iran, anybody, why should any of us receive Jesus and be saved? Now, if you've been saved very long, you already realize that a whole lot of answers would be given to me and could be given to me to answer the question. But I want to hear you answer this one question in a very particular way. So let me rephrase the question. Here it is. What would be the very best, the one and only best answer to the question, why should a person receive Jesus as their Savior? Well, the answer to the question is going to be given here in just a couple of minutes. But we're beginning today to study, as I said, in Leviticus 16, the Day of Atonement. You have probably heard this day often referred to as Yom Kippur. It's the most important day in the whole year for the life of the Jewish nation. Do you know why? Well, we're going to find out why today, tomorrow, maybe even Friday, as we work our way through Leviticus chapter 15. Please, this most important day. Have you had the most important day in your own life? I'll come back to that question here in a moment. This radio program, as my announcer said, is the radio arm of a gospel tract organization. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, a gospel tract, a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation from sin. I would love very much to put into your hand a free sample packet of our gospel tracts, and that sample packet contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. One of the tracts that's in that is this one, Ready to Die. And I'm emphasizing this one because in just less than a week, we're going to have a very special Memorial Day, Decoration Day, as it used to be called, where we get to honor people who have served in the military, and we use it as well to honor those presently serving in the military. This track, Ready to Die, is a testimony track of a young man named James Dunkley. He died on a second tour of duty in Iraq. He died, but what a powerful testimony. This title of a track, Ready to Die, was the motto of his life, a motto that he took for himself when he was 14 years of age. Uh, I cannot say strongly enough how much our young people of our day in our churches need to read this track. It not only challenges young people, it'll challenge lost people as well. Ready to die. Please let me send this to you. My announcer will give you some ways to contact us at the end of the program. Or you can just go and order the sample packet at our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.com. 
dot O-R-G. If your Bible's open to the book of Leviticus chapter 16, the chapter opens this way. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they had offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, that's the holy of holies, which is upon the ark, that he die not, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat." Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Jump to verse 5. It says this, And he, Aaron, shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a burnt offering. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. And he shall take the two goats and present Present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. I'll stop, please, reading right there. I'm going to take more time on this chapter, this day of the Lord dealt with here in Leviticus chapter 16 than I typically do with the other chapters. And I, as I said a moment ago, the title used by the Jewish people uh, for this event is called Yom Kippur. That word Yom is the Hebrew word for day. And the word Kippur comes from the root word, which means to ransom. It would be equivalent to our New Testament word redemption. Yom Kippur was the day the ransom price was paid so that the Jews could be right with God. Their sin debt was paid on the day of atonement, and the people and the tabernacle itself were clean in God's sight. This day pictures for you and me the day of a salvation of a soul from their own sin. Now, my question at the beginning today was this, why should a person be saved from their sin by receiving Jesus Christ? And I said that there was just one best answer. The answer is this. Listen now, the answer is the salvation of a sinner brings glory to God. The salvation of a sinner brings glory to God. That's the best answer. Listen to these words out of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6. It says, To the praise of the glory of his, God's grace, wherein he, God, hath made us accepted in the beloved, that is, in Jesus. Now, to be sure, salvation is God's plan. It is God's work, and it's done first and foremost to bring glory to him. To be sure, the repentant sinner is greatly and eternally benefited. Salvation, though, is never done to bring glory to man. Ephesians 2, 9 says, not of works lest any man should boast. Only God gets glory when a soul is saved. I have outlined Leviticus 16 into four sections, and each one of these sections has a key word beginning with the letter R, like in the word rabbit. Let me give you the outline here if I can. First of all, the great readiness, the great readiness for atonement, verses 1 through 10. The second part is the great rightness by means of atonement. The great rightness by means of atonement, verses 11 to 19. The third part is the great removal through atonement. The word removal there, this covers verses 20 to 28. By the idea of removal here, it's sin that's removed. This is the section where the scapegoat is sent away. The fourth and final part of chapter 16 I've called the great repetition of atonement. The great repetition, verses 29 to 34. You see, for the Old Testament Jewish person, they needed a yearly atonement. Why? You see, in the book of Hebrews, if you look at particularly chapters 9 and 10, where this uh, day of atonement is referred to, we read these words. I'm quoting now from chapter 10, verse 4 of Hebrews. It says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. But in that same book of Hebrews, we find that it says this, that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. There is no forgiveness. Leviticus 16 
it ends with a charge that this day of atonement, and the word atonement means to cover, Leviticus 16 ends with a charge that this day of sin covering had to happen every single year. Verse 34 of Leviticus 16 puts it this way. It calls it an everlasting statute for the Jews. The yearly animal sacrifice could temporarily cover the past year's sins. They could not, though, put away in advance any future sins that the Jews would do this coming year. When Jesus came, he came to be the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Jesus came to do this, but listen, listen to the words again from the book of Hebrews. It says this in chapter one, when he, referring to Jesus, when Jesus had by himself purged our sins. Dear friends, do you hear that? By himself, not by him and your good works, not by him and your baptism, not by him and your priest. When he, Jesus, had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Salvation is a work that's accomplished by Jesus alone. Jesus alone, Jesus alone. Again, listen to the book of Hebrews. It says this, Jesus needeth not daily as those high priests, referring to the Old Testament Jewish priests, Jesus needeth not as uh, daily as those priests to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this Jesus did once when he offered up himself. Now, as we're going to continue to look at Leviticus chapter 16 tomorrow and more likely on Friday as well, we're going to see a number of pictures, a number of types of the Lord Jesus here. The Day of Atonement reminded people first and foremost of their great need for the forgiveness of sin. The great need. So tell me, dear listener friend, have you Look square, I mean head on, squarely looked, eyeball to eyeball with your personal need for the forgiveness that you have for the sins you have committed. You're a personal sinner before Almighty God. Has the whole world sinned? Yes. Did Christ die for the whole world? Yes, but he died for the sinners one by one. Oh, he did not die once and then again and then again and again. He didn't die once for every single person. He died once for the world. But you must receive him personally. You must squarely look at your need for forgiveness. Have you done that? The forgiveness you need is found only in the person of Jesus and his shed blood at Calvary's cross. He bore your sin in his body on the tree. That's what the Bible says. That's why he died. Oh, friend, knowing why he died, knowing who it was that was dying on the cross and knowing why he died is wonderful. I'm glad you have that information. But have you acted upon it to personally receive him? If you haven't, do so right now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.